We're researchers in the Department of Pharmacology at the University of Arizona. Here, in the lab of Dr. Todd Vandera, we study pain and addiction. We recently reviewed the pharmacology of neurokinin receptors in addiction, prospects for therapy. Substances of abuse like cocaine, amphetamines, and narcotics have resulted in a large problem within the United States, costing well over $700 billion. Understanding the substances of abuse means that we must understand the rewarding pathways and the release of a neurotransmitter that results in rewarding activity called dopamine. Now, a number of things will actually modulate the release of dopamine. One of those, sort of unexpectedly, is substance P, as well as the other peptides of the neurokinin family. Substance P is famously known as one of the principal neurotransmitters released from the primary afferent, propagating the nociceptive signal to the central nervous system. It's also well known as a pro-inflammatory mediator in multiple tissue types around the body. But when substance P containing neurons were discovered in the central nervous system, it lent evidence that they may play a role in the modulation of the central nervous system activity. It was then discovered that substance P actually stimulated the release of dopamine, suggesting that they may play a role in rewarding activity. We knew substance P played a crucial role in activating the reward pathway, but we didn't know exactly where substance P was coming from. Lesion studies of the 1960s and 70s kind of helped piece together this neurokinergic puzzle. But it wasn't really until the early 1990s when pharmacologists finally gained a non-peptidic neurokinin antagonist as part of their pharmacologic toolbox. The subsequent behavioral and neurochemical studies really flourished from there, giving us the picture of neurokinin neural pathways that we know today. When neuroscientists and psychologists study reward or addiction, many of the studies involve the dopaminergic pathway from the ventral tegmental area to the nucleus accumbens via the medial forebrain bundle. Now it's the modulation of this by substance P and other neurokinins that we're actually concerned with in this review. The nucleus accumbens sends neurokinin pathways right back to the ventral tegmental area. The VTA also receives neurokinergic pathways from the habenula. The nucleus basalis, magnocellularis, and amygdala also receive neurokinin inputs that affect the reward pathway. Preclinical studies with an NK1 antagonist suggested that they may be effective as analgesics inhibiting pain. However, moving into clinical trials, the first NK1 antagonist, called a propitant, actually failed, most likely due to the fact that there are a number of different pain neurotransmitters and the NK1 antagonist was only blocking one of these. Then, it gained actually an indication as an anti-emetic treating chemotherapy-induced nausea and has recently been shown to be effective against substance abuse. So we hope you read and enjoy our review on pharmacology of neurokinins and addiction and gain a new perspective on how we can use that pharmacology to our advantage as a new potential drug target.